Now we'll assemble the 48 volt spindle mount. Start by putting the provided screws through the V-wheels, followed by aluminum spacers. Place these screws through the holes provided on the spindle mount. You'll notice again there are smaller holes and larger holes. The smaller holes are for V-wheels with nylock hex nuts, and the larger holes are for V-wheels with eccentric nuts. Be sure that you put nylock hex nuts on the V-wheels in the smaller holes, and eccentric nuts on the V-wheels with the larger holes. Again, you want to make sure that the shoulder of the eccentric nut faces the plate. When threading on the eccentric nuts, be sure that the shoulder seats inside of the larger hole. Tighten all of these connections down with the tools. Be sure that the eccentric nuts are oriented so that the screw that's captured by them is as far as possible from the V-wheels with the nylock hex nuts. This provides the greatest distance between V-wheels and makes it easier to put the spindle mount onto the Z-axis. Slide the spindle mount onto the Z-axis. If you're having trouble, check the orientation of your eccentric nuts. Align the two holes in the spindle mount with the Delrin nut and thread two screws into it. Start by getting these screws finger tight as it's easy to cross thread the Delrin. Tighten the screws down with the wrench. Put the three M4 screws into the holes for the clamp of the spindle mount. Start the screws finger tight. Slide the 48 volt spindle into the clamp. The black and red wire should just clear the top of the clamp. Tighten the screws for the clamp a little bit at a time, alternating until all three are as tight as you can make them.